that in fact have this mechanism for keeping this away from the mainstream. Now, just imagine, you've got these chaps going on at the press club in Washington. They go to the world, they make a special announcement by it, put their reputations on the line. They're very high level individuals in terms of, of the frames of reference that we make on our planet, if you see what I'm trying to say. They come and do this, and have you noticed? It's silence. There is no reaction. And, and you'd get people with toothache on the front pages of our, our, our newspapers and so on, if they are royalty or whatever. Now, this is absolutely ludicrous. Okay, take it up. Try and shoot it down, if you like. Clause. Give both sides an equal chance. The point is, I think, too much evidence is out now, and too many people who are in high places know about this thing, and they dare not do that. So the most effective way is just to be silent. Do nothing, and it will go away. Well, I think they're in for a big surprise, because we have children. And if this thing might be a menace to our future, and the future of our children particularly, then maybe enough people will have enough to say about this. Dr. Silverman would like to say something. Well, I was just going to say that um, when people say if these creatures were really here, then they would definitely have, have shown themselves, why don't they um, appear at the White House and so on. Um, I mean, yes, that would be, be true if, you, if, as Nigel said, you do consider them to be some kind of beneficent uh, thing. If people did have that point of view, then, then why? But if you look at it from... Look at what human beings do. Uh, look at what naturalists do who study, who study wildlife or uh, scientists doing uh, vivisectionists or experiments on animals. They, they don't go and, um, if they're doing an experiment on an ant hill, they don't ask for an interview with the, the queen ant or the, the queen bee or whatever. They, they just put them in a, in a situation where they can see the animals, but the animals can't see them, so that they can study as objectively as they can what's actually happening there and so they'll put little implants or um, radio transmitters on them so that they can watch what they're doing but they have no need to communicate with with the creatures that they're they're studying in fact if the creatures know what they're up to then it would be it would interfere with with what they're doing so the, and if if this um, if these creatures these um, roboids or whatever they are are trying to understand what it is about us that means that we can come back after death so that they could try to piggyback on that then they definitely wouldn't want us to be privy to to what they're trying to to do yeah, with their experience. that is only if they have something to hide I believe because a really kind and loving beneficent type of entity would teach us the ABC of what they know, as we teach children who know nothing the ABC. We would take that trouble. They would take that trouble. And that's what troubles me. They do not. Yeah. And so that's the really, that's the, that's the point at which one has to ask these questions in, you know. And I think we're entitled to if we have children. It, it does seem that intelligent uh, beings do experiment with lower life forms. I mean, we do it here on Earth, don't we? But we, if we could ask that permission, yeah. the, the kindly ones would do that. And we do our best to give them, put them under anesthetics or whatever it is. And, 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 and you know, they're, uh, laboratory technicians, are, they're not wicked, evil people. They really do not want to give pain to animals and so on. They just take a great deal of trouble not to hurt them. Yes, whether you, uh, uh, you agree with the vivisection or not I, I, I mean, is, is, is a mute yeah. point in, in this. I mean, I, in my own terms, I would not harm an animal, but I would try to help humankind as much as I possibly can as my first criterion. And if we don't need animals at all, I would, I would choose that methodology. Okay. Uh, the greys don't, don't give anesthetics, no. you see. They just have a way of controlling our minds that sometime... So, and that process is broken under hypnosis. And, of course, these people who they've abducted go through the most horrendous <clears throat> experiences, it seems. Yep. And they're scarred for life. But I think they are special. I say again, I believe, what it's worth, I believe these are very special people. And that, that, that by looking at them, the greys may well be finding that there are some resistant human human beings, to what they may be trying to do to the entire scheme of humanity. And that unless they find out why some 
are resistant, whatever they're trying to do may not work adequately for their purposes. So maybe the abductees, in a sense, now that's no constant, that's no consolation to abductees, but maybe the abductees have that kind of sense of of, of, of value to us all, rather than uh, are just out and out victims, if you see what I'm trying to yeah. say to this purpose. Because you see, it is only the ones that give a problem that you need to deal with. The ones that don't give a problem, you, you can, you know, not touch. And so that's why maybe many of us are not a problem to them to intercept, so they can, you know, take care of all of us. But, but maybe genetically there are some people who might be resistant, and I would love to know what that resistance might be myself. I've got a question I want to ask yeah. you guys, because obviously you've got the, the qualifications to answer this. Um, you know, within the, the New Age community, uh, there is a lot of really positive stuff um, that tries to, you know, give credence to spirituality. But there's a lot of other stuff that's it's really on a, it's really on the fringe. And what I'm trying to say here is that there's a lot of channeled material um, that claims to talk to angels or ETs yeah. um, that yes. claim we're going through an ascension process okay and they yes, say that yes. there is a light coming from the center of the, of the milky way that's upgrading our dna and we're all going to go off to a fifth dimension now oh, obviously yeah. with is that actually possible i just want to know from a scientific point of view what is that possible well can i tell you whether it's possible or not ian the problem with that is it's subjective and there is no way that for the um for the um purposes of people's belief, right? There's no way that the subjective can be tested. This is why the scientific method is important in terms of the atomic travail of things, if you see what I'm trying to say. Because it's out there in the open, it has to be repeated, and everybody can see that, if you see what I'm trying to say. Much as I would like to believe what people say, many, many people are very well-intentioned, I'm absolutely certain. But I have to say that it's very, very difficult to take if you put the full cartel of all the various things that have happened subjectively to people, how on earth do you decide which may be true and which may be not? But, uh, Dr. Silverman wants to Yeah, no, I just wanted to say, if, if you're talking about um, an upgrade, you have to define what is up and what is down. And I actually uh, do like Nigel's um, idea of this, this polarity that you have either the altogether harmonious state of of everything being being one in in perfect order, or you have everything apart in separation. Now, the point of the the interesting point about this the ordered state is that that's the one with the potential. That's the one with the freedom, if you like. That the seed can become a tree, if you like. But the tree will, although it, it may make seeds, it will each seed will be will be less than the one that went before it and the tree will break down it will decay and so on and and this is the this is the point now what is if there is a, a physical momentum that that produces an upgrade then you have to question what is which way is up and which way is down so this is where i would suggest that actually if you want to get back to the original state that we came from i think the the great teachers were giving us a clue when they said that actually if you love your neighbor as yourself, then you will escape this, this physical universe, what the Hindus and Buddhists call the wheel of rebirth or, or, um, or what um, Jesus, for example, talked about achieving the, the kingdom of heaven. That actually they're talking about uh, eternal existence beyond time and space, which you can access not through technology, but you can access through fulfilling the potential that lies within a, a human being. If they come through technology, you know, Ian, they are not likely to be spiritually advanced and be able to communicate or be channeled on a spiritual plane. This is hardwired atomic stuff. You see what I'm trying yep. to say? So, I mean, going back to, you know, sort of pre, uh, pre uh, previous to Egypt, like Sumerian times, there's a, uh, a, a race called the Anunnaki, that people talk about yeah. and I just wondered if you'd come across that in your research with the greys as well yeah you're talking about the step uh, the step sitting yeah. uh, Sitchin's uh, uh, ideas and so on well you know I think 
whilst they seem to be on the surface plausible, I don't really know why an advanced technology that can go past the speed of light can't invent te a, a technology to harvest as much gold as possible in a wink, so to speak, you know. I think that that, that is the kind of thinking that is earth type derived yes right we will get technology to mine this gold rubies whatever it is because they they would have